Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins here on our YouTube channel, and I got a great video for you. This is growth stocks versus value stocks for the year of 2021. It's going to give some analysis on what happened with growth stocks compared to value stocks, and I think it's going to be some very interesting analysis to actually understand if you're in the right space or not. So if you want to find out what the results were all about, you sit right there. Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Always, as always, love bringing these videos to your attention. And I love that I try to bring it from an educational standpoint, more so than trying to push you in either direction. Those decisions have to be yours. If you're brand new to the channel, by all means, please hit the subscribe button. Still trying to grow our channel, get new eyeballs to see what we're doing here at VectorVest. Make sure you hit the bell icon so that when new videos like this come out, you're always in the know. And of course, if you like the content, you find it useful to you as a practical application, don't forget to hit that like button. All right, so let's get right into it. What is the difference between a growth stock and a value stock? And if you haven't looked at our videos, I've done videos on both of them throughout the year. Go take a look at them uh, and probably you'll see down in the uh, description below a link to both of those videos. But let's do a big overview of it, right? So in the VectorVest system, we have a searching tool called Unisearch. And I've built two searches specifically on the fly for growth stocks and for value stocks. Growth stocks, these are stocks that should outperform the market over the next one to three years. Stocks that should have the propensity to go up in value and go up in price. Now, also with that, you're going to assume a little bit more risk with a growth stock. So for those people who are VectorVest subscribers, I've built this search for you. Take a look at the search. Again, I did it just for the YouTube service uh, to give you some, um, some kind of analysis on what we look for for a growth stock. One, I want the price to be greater than a dollar. I want liquidity. So I want the average volume to be greater than 250,000 shares. Here's the kicker. This is where VectorVest comes in. I want relative value of the stock's long-term upside potential to be greater than one cast on that scale between zero and two. Stocks that have a relative value greater than one tend to outperform the market. The higher above one it is, the more it should outperform the market. I want the earnings growth rate to be greater than 10%. Earnings is the engine that drives a stock's price higher. So I want to make sure that these are stocks that are going to have the propensity to go up, but they've got good earnings growth and the price is less than $10. A lot of people, when they're looking at uh, growth stocks, they're looking to try to find lower dollar stocks that have an idea or possibility of going up. Another thing, I'm using a sort. Stocks that have good relative value and good CI or comfort index. The comfort index is also cast on a scale between zero and a two, and it looks for the stock's ability to withstand long or lengthy price declines. So if we wrap this all up, greater than a dollar, liquidity, greater than 250,000 shares, relative value, upside potential, greater than one, good earnings growth, the price has got to be less than a dollar, good relative value, and a good comfort index, stocks that are resilient. So if you have the VectorVest system, you can build this and you can return the stocks. I'm not going to return the stocks for those who are not subscribers to the software. So those are the growth stocks. Now let's go take a look at the value stocks. These are stocks that Warren Buffett looks at. These are stocks that are undervalued, that are trading at a low price possibly, or that have a good propensity to go up in price over time. Not the quick pops like growth stocks, but value stocks are more designed to go up over time and actually bring you in some passive income as you'll see in this search. So the stock is less than its value. In VectorVest, we assign an intrinsic value on every stock. In this case, because we're looking at value stocks, we want to find undervalued stocks, price greater than a dollar. Again, we want liquidity, so the average volume's got to be greater than 250,000 shares. Now, this is where the passive income comes in. I want stocks that pay a dividend of at least two 
dollars. I want that relative safety factor, which is an indicator of risk for these value stocks to be greater than one. In the other search for growth stocks, I want it relative value to be above one, the stock's ability to outperform the market. But in a value stock, I want safer stocks to make me money over time. And this is sorted by our indicator, relative safety. So it brings the safest stocks to the top of the list. So those are the differences between growth stocks and value stocks. And I did a little bit of a back test to give a small sampling of what they've done over the year. I'm gonna go to our back tester. So I've done two tests for you. Now, in this, I use growth stocks 2021. Uh, for the year, it went from 12-1 of 2020 to 12-1 of 2021. So looking at a whole year. We used a market timing signal called the DEW signal. And again, as a VectorVest subscriber, you know what that is. That's a great middle of the road market timing call. Again, from 12 one to 12 one These portfolios both started out with $100,000. And you'll notice that uh, for the growth stocks, we made 14.5% over the year. That's not bad, but I want you to look at some other analysis. One, out of the stocks, and these were all based off of 10 stock portfolios, and on the up call in the DEW, it bought stocks from that search that I just showed you, but in a down call, when we got a DEW down call, it went into cash, so it sat and went straight into cash and waited for the next up call. All right, so 14.5%, no commissions, uh, annualized out to 14.49%, but look at this, when you assume the risk of trying to go after growth stocks, look at the drawdown, almost a 25% loss in the portfolio at any given time. That's a lot for somebody to have to sit through to get a 14% gain, right? That's interesting, but there's a lot of people who are willing to buy into growth stocks knowing that it's going to be a little bit more risky, but I wanted to show you the analysis. It is. It gives you a bigger pullback in your portfolio so you can make bigger gains. Um, and I would really like the gains to be outside of the, uh, the max drawdown, but then again, this is just a sampling. I could have done a lot more to make this better or worse, but nonetheless, this is just some insight. Now, on the other side, value stocks, 10.68% uh, uh, annualized over 10.69%, but look at this, 6.85% in pullback or drawdown. So people who are looking at value stocks, remember, these stocks pay a dividend. I did not account for the dividend for these stocks over the year as well. This is just the raw data. Something else I want you to look at on the growth side, out of the stocks that uh, you traded, 40, almost 41% of the trades were positive, but look on the value side, 56, almost 57% of the trades were positive. So granted, you can make more money trading growth stocks, but can you sleep well at night? And for those of you who are looking for Warren Buffett type stocks, now you know why he does what he does. Almost 57% winners. That's great when you're trading in the market. Of course, you'd like to have more, but anything over 50% is a great thing. And the drawdown is only less than 7% trading. Now, what stops did I use? I use VectorVest stops on both of these trading systems. On the growth stocks, because I was looking for stocks that would have good upside, I use relative timing going below one. Relative timing looks at the short-term price trend of the stock. When the stock was no longer in an uptrend, that was my trigger to get out of the stock. Now, on the uh, value stocks, I looked at rele uh, uh, recommendation equal to sell. If these are good value stocks that are going up over time, once they received the sell recommendation, I got out of those stocks and replaced them with another stock. So folks, the whole idea of this was just to give you some oversight, some insight, not oversight, some insight as to the differences between growth plays and value plays. Again, to follow up on the videos that I've done this year on growth stocks and value stocks. So it puts a nice little bow around it, all right? With that, I hope you found this useful. And guess what? No matter whether you are a growth player or a value player, both opportunities gave you the ability to make money in the market. It all depends on where you sit, where you stand, on what best fits you. This is all about education, not pushing you in any direction. All right, folks, this video is over. And until the next time, see ya.